So let me begin by talking about the differences between God's love and other types of love, and we're going to ask some questions. And so um, I'm going to begin, and don't, don't answer out loud, please. Do you love your spouse? Okay. Do you love your spouse? Okay. If yes, what do you mean by that? Okay, just, just kind of think about this in your heart. If when you say to your spouse, I love you, well, what do you mean by that? I mean, really, what are you trying to say when you tell them that you love them? If the answer is no, what do you mean by that? If you're saying, I, re- I don't really think I, you know, because some people would say, I don't think I ever loved you. You know, this is a real common thing when people are divorcing. A lot of times they'll say, well, I'm, I don't love you, and I don't know that I ever loved you. Okay, well, all right. If you don't love your spouse, I mean, what, what are you trying to say when you're saying that you don't love them? And if yes, if your answer is yes, and I'm saying, do you love your spouse? And you say, yes, Jimmy, I love my spouse. Okay, well, what's the difference between loving them and loving hot dogs? Or loving your poodle? Or loving your new pajamas or your new car? Shouldn't there be a different word? Don't, don't you really think that we ought to distinguish between animals and humans or objects and humans? But, but, but we don't. The word love is a very inefficient, sloppy, overused word in the English language, but not in the Greek language. The Bible was originally written in Greek or translated in Greek. And Greek is a very powerful language. And whereas we have one basic word for the word love, there are five basic words for the word love in the Greek language. So if we were speaking Greek, someone said one time in the New Testament, there are 20,000 Greek words, but only 5,000 English words. That's how exacting the Greek language is in many more words. So when you're telling a person in the Greek language that you love them, you can tell very specifically that you love them. So let me give you five kinds of love, five, five words for love from the Greek language so that we can be very specific now about what we mean when we say we love someone. The first word is the word epithumeia or the word thumos. It's a Greek word, that's where we get our word thermos, by the way, and it means passion. It means emotion. I I feel hot. I feel passionate about that. So when we're talking sometimes about the Dallas Cowboys, I'm pointing at all the other teams across America. You're in for it this year. We're going to win this year. But... When you're talking about your, you know, your uh, football team or you're talking about you know, something in your life you're passionate about, that's the word epithemia in the Greek language. So they can get real precise about the difference between just an emotion or a feeling and, and something else. The second word, the Greek word for love, is the word eros. And of course we know what that means. That means sexual desire. And so if someone's talking about sex and they're saying that you know, I'm sexually attracted to you. I want to have a sexual relationship with you. We call making love. You know, I can just tell you, you can't make love by having sex. You can express love by having sex, but you can't make love by having sex, even though it can enhance your relationship. But a lot of people, honestly, when they're telling their spouse or someone that they love them, they're really talking about a sexual feeling, okay? The third word for love in the Greek language is the word phileo. It's P-H-I-L-E-O, phileo, the, word, the city Philadelphia is, we know, the city of brotherly love. It's philos and delphia. Delphia means brother, philos means uh, friendship, a fond affection like that. So I can say to my friends, you know, my, my guy friends, you know, I tell them I love them. You know, I've had a lot of friends for 30 or 40 years, I love them. And I say, I love you. You know, they love you too. We're talking about this. I'm saying, I love you as a brother in the Lord. I love you like a brother. So that's a different kind of love. The next word for love in the Greek language is the word storge, where we, uh, it's a family bond. And so it's, I love my mom and dad. I love my siblings. I love, I have blood kin. And there's just a, a blood bond among family. Is, uh, so it's just a family kind of a bond. But here's the fifth word, agape. That's God's love. And here's the, here's the unique thing about agape love. It is the only non-emotion based love. Every other type of love requires a feeling, except for agape. So when the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, he's not talking about a feeling. 
It doesn't mean that he doesn't have a feeling, but his love is not based on feelings. And we all need to be thankful for that. Because God's love is a very, very stable love. When God commands us to love each other, he's not talking about a feeling. You know, they came to Jesus and they said, Lord, what is the most important commandment? And Jesus said, love God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. We can't manipulate our emotions. When God tells us to love our neighbor, how can we love our neighbor if we don't like our neighbor? You know, people ask me, they, they say, Jimmy, do, do pets go to heaven? Do pets go to heaven? And, and you know, I tell people, I, I think so, you know, and it's like God that there will be animals in heaven. The lion lays down with the lamb and, you know, well, why do I bring that up? Well, my neighbor's dogs are going to hell. You know, they're, <laughs> and they're, they got barking demons and they're lost. They're, they, they need a little doggy evangelist to come through and get them saved. And so how do I love my neighbor if my neighbor's irritating me? What if I, how do I love my neighbor if I don't even know my neighbor? Because I can make a decision to do what's right for that person as God would even though I don't have a good emotion for them. I don't have to like you to love you the way God does. I don't have to agree with you to love you like God does. God's love is the only love that does not require an emotion to function. So I wanna go back again to some questions, okay? Do you love your spouse? Do you love your spouse? If so, are you primarily measuring that by an emotion or a decision. Okay. And I'm just saying this to get you to think about this. If no, what do you mean by that? If you say, no, I don't love my spouse anymore, are you saying you've lost your desire, the, the epithemia, the thumos? Are you saying sexually, they're, you know, the, the lights are out there and it's, it's not happening, that you've lost the eros? That, you're out of like, you just don't have a desire to be around them, you're out of philos or phileo. What, is it, what exactly are you saying when you say that you don't love your spouse? You, you need to think about that, okay? And here's another question. With what type of love do you want to be loved? If, if you were going to another individual and you were choosing how they were gonna love you, because the Bible says, that we're to do for others as we would want done for us, the golden rule, okay? So how do you want to be loved? Do you want to be loved based on feeling or based on a decision? Do you want the way that people treat you to be, fa to be based on how they feel about you or decision that they make? This is a very important thing because all of us have a basic concept of love. And the purpose of this session is to get you to change your concept of love, if your concept of love isn't right. And we tell people that we love them, that we're passionately in love with them, and we stand in front of a preacher and we get married with all the highest hopes in the world, and several years later we're standing in front of a judge and we hate each other. There's something wrong with that kind of love. You can't build a life around it. You can't build a family around it. It is not dependable. It is not God's kind of love. God's kind of love is a love that is not based on emotion. And it doesn't mean there aren't emotions there. It's based on a decision. Thank you for joining us. Experience the life-changing series, The Indestructible Marriage, on CD or DVD. Become a rock-solid partner today and equip yourself with the tools you need for a successful marriage. $14, $28, or $56 per month. Choose the partnership level that's right for you. Become a rock-solid partner today.